Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason and I am your watch guy today. We've all seen the watches that claim to have their inspirations and every now and then one comes along and you're just like, well, I, I don't know where you've got that from, mate, but okay. Remember the one that was inspired by the ant? I still don't get that. And there's plenty of even bigger brands that do exactly the same. And they say that they have this sort of inspiration. Seiko the worst for it. They say that they've got this inspiration from some sort of character or cartoon or something like that. And it's like one splash of colour. And it makes no sense. However, today I'm reviewing a watch from a brand that has absolutely nailed their inspiration. Today I am reviewing the Revolot R9 Veloce. And it is inspired by sports cars, supercars. And honestly, everything throughout this watch especially the dial gives you that sports car type of vibe that supercar speed demon type of vibe to it and therefore i can't really fault revelot there these ones are also an amazing price they are 189 pounds in their sale at the moment i have linked them in the description genuinely a fantastic deal to be had there the one that I got in today is an absolute beauty, but there are other colour options also. Now, in the interest of honesty, this one has been provided for free by Revelot. I don't have to retain it. However, this review is completely open and honest, and they had no say in it whatsoever. So, with all that out of the way, let me turn this camera around and let's have a look at the Revelot R9 Veloce. So, guys, this is the Revelot R9 Veloce. Now they have this in a plethora of different colour options. This one was my pick just for the khaki green and gunmetal type of vibe to this one. I thought that it really did blend well with the design of the watch. I kept seeing these pop up on my Instagram feed and eventually I just got in contact with Revelot because I really, really needed to see it in person. It looks fantastic. It's one of the bigger watches on the spectrum. Well, this one is a little bit of a hard one to judge, to be fair. So you see we have these guard positions either side of the crown here, and they also mirror this side of the case. And well, if you measure from there to there, this one comes in a 45.5 millimeters. However, if you measure the diameter without them, it comes in a 44.1. And that will probably put a lot of people off straight away. However, let me tell you why that isn't a big factor. The lug to lug of this piece is 50 millimeters. However, it drops considerably straight down due to this lug system. And that really does aid the wearability of this piece. And it makes it very wearable for people with smaller wrists, including myself. I have a six and a quarter inch wrist and wearing this has been a pleasure for me. I've really enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed how wearable they have made this watch in fact just because of how unexpected it would be that this fits to my wrist finishing off the dimension of this piece it is 14.9 millimeters thick and it is 22 millimeter lugs however you won't be changing this one out for another strap i think it'd be pretty difficult to find one plus i don't know why you would because this strap is really really nice and it fits the piece very well You'll notice that this is a chronograph watch and it's actually fitted with a Myota chronograph, Japanese quartz chronograph, however, not the Seikos that we are used to on the channel. This one is packed with a Myota 6S20, which actually could be a bonus for this watch. Let me tell you why. The layout of the watch itself really does aid in how attractive the piece is. So we have the second counter down here at the six o'clock and that ticks away very nicely obviously you can't see the actual dig digits or anything like that it gives an almost car rim type of effect as it spins down at the bottom there and i do really like that type of design and the ticking really does aid a little bit i think to the design of the piece as well as that it allows for this date window double date window up at the 12 o'clock which again Gives me a little bit of a car vibe, a little bit of a racing vibe. Maybe because of that heads up type of display that it really allows for. The watch itself has multiple layers throughout the dial. It's very well built. 
and I will get to that very shortly after we piece together this case. Fully brushed finish to the fixed bezel on this piece. We have this guard-like feature to the side of the watch. Now that is completed again with a brushed finish. Layers to the side of the watch also really do aid in the design of the piece. We have a screw down case back on this one. Again, in a very racing style vibe and that carbon fiber effect center to the case back really does just complete that look. We have the usual information around the outer edge, including launch edition up here at the 12. Moving to the other side of this piece, you can see the pushers and crown are very well designed. And we actually have a level of texture to the pushers, which makes it really easy to identify on the side of the watch and as if they weren't big enough already, you know, like you can definitely spot them, can't you? Adds a little bit of a design feature to the piece. And that's what Revlos are really about for me. I think that they add small little features throughout their watches that really culminate in a fantastic watch, a very desirable piece to look at. Really do like that extra sweep that the chronograph hand has when resetting. Now it is a simple pull push crown on this one. As you can see there, first position date, second position time. And the crown is signed and it is in that gunmetal color, which flows very well with the case. I really do like the contrast that the gunmetal and green, khaki green have to each other, especially on the uh, pushes over to the side here. That, that really does aid in how aesthetically pleasing this watch is. Sapphire Crystal finishes off the casing itself. And altogether, this watch is provided with 100 meters of water resistance. Now we're gonna get into this absolutely fantastic dial. As you can see, it's a very simple handset, very simple indice layout. The indices are built into the outer edge of the dial or the chapter ring, if you will. Chapter ring is in khaki green around the outer edge with a tacky meter feature to it, that measurement around the outer edge there. Very suitable for this type of style, this racing vibe to the chronograph. Up at the 12 o'clock, we have this almost heads up display as i mentioned previously it reminds me very much of the speedometer on a more more recent car you get that really nice heads up display on them i think that that's really what it does remind me of and the revlot logo is in the center there at 12 o'clock also the textures to the dial really do add to the entire vibe of the watch as you can see we do have a mixture of brushed and cutaway features to the dial which as I say, aid very nicely in the design of the watch. We have three sub dials on this piece and they are again built in layers. Lots of layers to this dial, which I think really helps in the almost skeleton-like feature that they have going with this quartz watch. Now, it's not very often that you see a quartz piece with a skeleton dial. However, the way that they've done this is to incorporate the quartz movement, the plate to the movement into the dial itself. As you can see here, this is the little plate of the movement. And then around the outer edge of that, we have a break disc type of design, which really makes it flow into the watch itself. It takes attention away from that quartz plate. However, also involves it into the design. They've really thought this piece out very well. And I really do appreciate that. We have the chrono minutes over to the left hand side here. The chrono seconds over to the right and the ticking seconds down at the six o'clock. Again, with that turbine type of feel to the ticking seconds, really does add to the design of the watch, the motor vibe to this piece. The indices have a nice level of brushing around them with loom centers. Now, speaking of loom, we're obviously gonna get the loom shot on the go here. Let me just get these lights out and we'll talk about the loom on this piece. Okay, so you can see we have a mixture of pale blue and green loom on this one, BGW9C3. So the loom on the handset is spread pretty evenly. However, it's not exactly the brightest in the world. Same goes for the indices, spread rather evenly. However, not the brightest in the world. I understand that this is a racing style chronograph and we are not relying on loom here. Just really something that you should be aware of the loom isn't going to blow you away however it's functional and it will serve the purpose that it should i mean if you're going through a tunnel in your car it'll be perfectly fine however if you're trying to dive it's probably not for you in fact 
you shouldn't expect any dive features from this piece, let me just be clear about that. I didn't mention the box style handset on this one. Loom in the centre with a black centre throughout and a nice brushed outer edge. The chronograph hand has a really, really lovely red tip to it. I really do like the disc effect. It, it gives you a nicer feel to the measurement of time passing. I didn't think I'd like the Myota movements in this, but yeah, it's won me over. It really has. And it, it's definitely kept the price down to a very affordable level. As we move into the band, I decided to leave the really smart lug feature to the band section of this piece. Veloce is inscribed onto the lug there and rev a lot up to the top. Now this really pretty genius lug feature makes this watch very wearable for people with smaller wrists like myself. As you can see here, the lugs are built into an almost swing arm type of design and therefore they do go straight down and actuate quite nicely to the wrist. As well as that, we have some really nice features to the lug screws themselves. See, the one thing that I do very like about Revelot is that they build their features very aesthetically pleasingly to the eye. And you can see that in these lugs. Very smart design, as well as being very functional. Following on from that, we have a very smooth and soft rubber band to this piece up to the buckle here you can see the revlot inscription brushed finish very substantial feeling buckle two keepers and the keeper has a holder on the rubber band there let me get this on wrist and show you how it looks on my six and a quarter inch wrists here we go as i say it fits really nicely to wrist and you can see that is very much due to that lug design now there was a little bit of hesitancy when this was coming in from Revelo as well as myself, just due to the size of the watch. However, I think it's completely won the smaller wrist vote here because it, it makes that really big style watch very wearable for pretty much everyone, I think. So it makes this a very a much more universal type of fit to wrist. If you're not used to wearing bigger watches, maybe not. However, if you're already in the 42 type of category, I think that this will fit fantastic for yourself. Very deceivingly big diameter on it. However, works pretty well with that lug uh, feature that we've got here. Very well done to Revelo for that. Now, where are the downsides with this watch? Well, as I just mentioned, size. Not everyone is going to be a fan of a bigger watch, even if it is wearable. It's 125 grams, which on a rubber band, a little bit up there. However, I do like myself, I do like the substantial type of watches when you can really feel it on wrist. The movement isn't exactly what you would call premium. Um, a lot of people do get stuck in their ways with the Seiko Movement fan club and how much value for money they bring. However, my also do also offer that type of value, as you can see here. Finally, the strap options. Now, I do love this lug uh, feature that makes this so wearable on wrist. However, it does eliminate any strap options that you may have for the watch and therefore corners you into this one strap. Or if they do sell the strap separately themselves, Revlot's strap options which a lot of people do get a little bit turned off by just because we do have massive collections of straps as well as watches in this community so it is nice to be able to use them in conclusion this watch does have its downsides as they all do however i think the thing to take home from this while this is on sale 189 pounds is a fantastic deal to be had on this watch the design of it alone sells that £189. As well as that, it's a very functional and well-featured watch. I mean, the disc second counter here sells it on its own, I think, that turbine down to the 6 o'clock, the heads-up display type of date. I, I just think it's a fantastic watch for the price. I mean, you don't get many better-looking watches for £189, so well done to Revelos for that. There we go guys, a supercar inspired watch that actually follows through with what it promises. And the specifications of that piece and the build quality really do 
outshine the £180 price tag that it does have. I think that's an absolute bargain. And if it's your type of style and you like a little bit of a bigger watch, I definitely think this is an option for yourself. I've linked Revlot's website in the description. That's not an affiliate link or anything like that, but this watch has been provided for free. Do remember that. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Please remember to subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.